Hey there, welcome back to my channel where today I'm playing with the Serenity palette from Cosmic Brushes. Above, I will card a video for you guys where I tell you about all the palettes I got during Black Friday and year-end sales. I picked up about seven or eight new ones. And so if you wanna see that video, it's right up here. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Rachel. I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I really like to play with eyeshadow and I especially like colorful eyeshadow. So this is the look that I came up with today using the Serenity palette. And if you wanna see how I did it, don't go anywhere. I'm so excited to be playing with the Serenity palette today. I did play with it once before and I used sort of blue-purple tones and then I brought in my September Rose palette to match the pink of my shirt and that was a really pretty look. But today, today I want to dip into these greens. So I'm going to prime my eyes using the Glam Light Icing Primer and we'll zoom in and get going. First I'm taking a medium blending brush and I'm grabbing the shade Spring. It is almost a spring green but it's a little bit more sagey kind of leaning. I don't know. I'm going to put it on my inner corner of the crease. I'm sorry about today's filming setup. I know it's quite different from what I've been doing lately. Um, and that is because I am sitting at my dining room table. Look at this color. Oh, what a pretty color. It's almost a mint sage spring combo. It, it is actually kind of springy when you put it on the eye because it has these interesting undertones, but there's a lot of mint in there as well. We live in a townhome and it's on a concrete slab. So on the outside of the townhome, there is an outdoor closet which contains the hot water heater and some other things. Well, recently I noticed that there was some wetness in the corner, like we have a bookshelf in the corner of the living room and then a few other pieces of furniture and I noticed it was wet there and I thought that the dog had maybe peed there overnight. I'm gonna take a denser blending brush. Which one? This one. And I'm going to go into this beautiful, murky, forest, mossy green sort of color. Oh, and it's called Moss. Love it when my description matches their name. It's called Moss, and I'm going to put that in the outer corner. Anyway, I thought the dog had had an accident there overnight, and it took a lot of towels to dry up. And later in the day, it was still just as wet, and that's when I realized, okay, this is clearly some sort of a leak somewhere, because it wouldn't still be wet, and it wouldn't have been that wet. So I felt around in other places near that spot and I realized that there was moisture underneath of the furniture. So I called the maintenance department and they sent somebody over right away because we had just come out of a really cold weather spell. And I thought maybe, even though we had our hot water dripping, maybe there's a burst pipe somewhere. It turns out that our hot water heater was leaking a little bit in the outdoor closet and it was leaking onto the concrete slab, which of course was then sliding under the wall into the living room. So we had to move our bookshelf, which was laden with books. And it was my husband's bookshelf. He legitimately needs a second bookshelf. There are so many books between the books he had already and then the books he's brought in for school. He really does need a second bookshelf. So all of his shelves were like double loaded, you know, there were books stacked and then books in front of those books. And we had to move all of that out of the way and then move the bookshelf itself out of the way and then move the couches and other furniture that was in that area. And then they came in and tore up the carpet and the padding underneath the carpet and brought in one of those floor fans and set that to, to dry for two or three days. And now they need to come back and put in a new carpet pad and then we can put all our furniture back. And so my living room therefore, why am I wiping this off? My living room therefore is all torn up. <laughs> I'm taking a small blending brush. This brush is clean and I wanna hit the edges just to soften it and see if I decide that I want to bring in another shade to buff it out, but I kind of don't think I will. Anyway, the living room's all torn up and the place where I usually film not only is filled with furniture that doesn't generally belong there, but also in the background my couch is covered in my husband's books because we had to empty the shelves to move the bookshelf because it was really, really heavy. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna film there. I need to find somewhere else to film. And that is the story of me sitting at the dining room table. Now it's time to deepen the outer corner. With a smaller blending brush, I'm taking the shade Forest and I'm gonna put this just in the outer corner. I didn't have any trouble blending these shades together. This palette has been so hugely hyped. I mean, I think the color story is beautiful, but it's not just color story. There are a lot of palettes out there with really lovely color stories, but terrible formula. It has to perform well, and so far I have had no trouble with it at all. I think that yes, the color story is beautiful and interesting and creative, but the formula itself is also very good. And because of that, it kind of opens up all these opportunities to come up with creative, 
different dynamic sorts of looks. So here's the shade Forest, just softly deepening the outer corner a little bit. I don't want to completely hide the greens that I've laid down because I still want it to be a contrast of cool and warm tones and depth and a little bit of murkiness, a little bit of springiness. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just rolling with it. I'm just having fun. Because I have a decent amount of videos in my queue, I'm not exactly sure when this one's going to go live, but I think it'll be sooner rather than later because this palette is um, just so much fun. And when I did my little 2022 holiday haul and I told you guys about the new palettes in my collection, most of you were pretty excited about this one, and so was I. Hopefully you will enjoy this look and this video. Hopefully this new filming setup, which is ideally temporary, is okay. It's actually a little bit easier for me because I have a table in front of me, but I think it echoes more because of the room that where I'm in and there's less puffy furniture to absorb the sound. I want to put on a shimmer now, so I've taken a flat brush and I've dipped into the shade Serenity and I'm going to spray that and then lay that down starting at the inner corner. I want to see what the shade looks like. I may merge it into, that's pretty, I may merge it into the, um, the darker greens with either that forest mossy green shimmer or maybe the gold shimmer. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just leave it as is. Let's see what it looks like next to these darker tones. Okay, I do think I want to bring in the mossy green shimmer. So I'll take the same brush and dip into that shade, which is called Wanderer, and I will spray it as well. I'm going to put Wanderer right here where the mattes and shimmers meet to help transition over from the cool toned of those minty blues into the warmer toned of these grungy greens. So now that we're in the new year, okay, I'm not one to make New Year's resolutions. I am firmly of the opinion that although that's a great idea, I don't want to wait necessarily until the beginning of the new year to make a big change in my life. If I feel that there needs to be a change in my life, I make it at the time that I'm convicted that it needs to happen. Whatever that may be, whether it's starting a workout program or eating healthier or reading more or taking my kids places, I don't know, whatever that may be. If I feel that a big change needs to happen, I want to do it right away because who knows if I'm going to get a new year. I mean, life is now. We are not promised a tomorrow. So I'm not really a New Year's resolution sort of person, but as 2022 came to an end, I, I did happen to be taking stock and looking back on the year, which, you know, I think that's a natural thing to do. This is pretty now. I like that. I'm going to do something on the lower lash line. Give me a second. I just want to play in the colors today. I'm going to take a small blending brush and grab the shade Echo, which is a sky blue matte. And I'm going to start this on my lower lash line at the inner corner and drag it, I don't know, maybe halfway. Anyway, I was taking stock towards the end of 2022 and really looking at my life. And this definitely coincided with my husband starting a school program because I can see his six year trajectory is this academic plan. And I kept thinking, well, what, what's my six year trajectory? What do I want my life to look like in six years? What sorts of things do I want to start? What sorts of things do I want to stop? Now I'm going to take that same brush and grab the dark purple matte, which is called Pixie. And I'll put that on my lower outer lash line. I think his schooling is really what kind of got me thinking because when I'm looking back at 2022, I feel like it was, it wasn't a bad year for us. It was a good year. I'm sorry if you hear the trash trucks outside. It was a good year, but personal development wise, I don't think I did much aside from eyeshadow. And there's nothing wrong with doing eyeshadow, but there are so many other things that I also want to do. So many things I want to use my time to achieve and accomplish and where I want to grow and where I want to improve. And with 2022 ending, I was looking at my life going, okay, what do I want 2023 to be? Because it's here now. And uh, again, I'm not promised a tomorrow, so I need to make the most of today. These two mattes have performed really, really nicely. Honestly, all the mattes have performed nicely, but look how pigmented they are because pastel tones can be difficult to formulate, but especially that blue, it's just really pigmented. Now I've taken a slightly smaller blending brush and I've dipped into the shade Sorbet. So here's the Sorbet shade, and I'm gonna put this as an inner corner pop. <laughs> Every time I do that, I just go, ooh, that's fun and weird and cute. For my waterline, I'm taking the shade Big Splash from ColourPop. It is a light blue, and I'll put that on the whole waterline. Anyway, all of that to say, I've been looking at what my life was in 2022, things that I could have done differently, things that I could have done better, 
and I see a lot of lack of structure and discipline, which I'm not really okay with. So in these next few days here, I'm going to be sitting down and trying to make some concrete plans for what I want 2023 to look like. I mean, you never know, but you have to you have to plan to some extent, otherwise your life passes you by. You have to plan. Even if, again, we're not guaranteed a tomorrow, I want to do the best that I can do while I am here. Do a good job with my life and do a good job teaching my children and being an example to them and showing them how to set goals and how to work towards their goals and how to use their time well and how to discipline themselves. Those are all such important life skills. And I don't think 2022 really held much of that for me. 2022 was kind of the year of eyeshadow. I put so much time into um, learning about eyeshadow and practicing techniques and buying palettes and making videos. And it's been really fun. And again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I need balance. I made a video recently and it was talking about finding the balance between work and hobbies and life and responsibilities and duties and just finding that homeostasis so that one thing doesn't totally overwhelm. Anyway, I'm gonna go off camera and finish the other side and I'll be right back to show you guys how it all looks at the end and to close out this video. All right guys, here's how I finished off the look. I also changed back to my original location, but I'm above all the mess, so hopefully you don't see it. Here is how it turned out. I did a winged eyeliner in the outer corner and then I did an inner flick, but I didn't line my upper lashes. As you already know, I used the big splash color on my waterline. And then on my face, I'm wearing the Tulum palette from BH Cosmetics for both bronzer and highlighter. And then on my lips, I'm wearing two shades from NYX Butter Gloss. First, I laid down Cinnamon Roll, and then to bring in just a little bit of pink, I took Sorbet and dabbed it over top. So that's the whole look. As far as the palette goes, I think it's really nice. I had no problems at all with the shades. Everything was pigmented, even the lighter tones like those pastels, which can be tricky. They were pigmented and lovely. Everything blended out really nicely and easily. And I had basically no kick up in the pan and definitely no fallout on my face. So overall, it's a winner. I understand the excitement and the hype over this palette. And I look forward to playing with it more because it has such a unique color story. You could get some really interesting looks from it. I hope you guys have liked this look. Thank you so much for being with me today and for hearing me ramble. I know I'm a bit scattered brain today because of having to shift locations and I didn't like filming over there because it kind of echoed and the lighting was weird and then the sun came up and really screwed me up and I just I prefer to film here so maybe I'll try to finagle something for my next video but anyway as far as the whole new year's resolution thing goes again I'm not really a resolutions sort of person but my thought process has really ended up focusing around the end of the year and coming into the new year my husband is out of state for almost the whole month of January so I have all this extra time to myself where I can sit down and come up with a schedule and a plan and really think through things and what do I want my life to look like because I want my children to be learning good things from me. I don't want them to look back on their childhood and go, oh, mom was undisciplined or unstructured or mom didn't have a plan, mom didn't know who she was. I don't want that because I want them to get good lessons from me and I want them to be able to thrive and succeed in their own lives. So I need to give them the tools, which means I need to implement those habits in my own life to teach them. So that's where my brain is right now. Once I have everything hashed out and laid down on some paper, I'll probably share some of that with you guys later in the month. Again, thank you so much for being with me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys again very soon. Have a great day. Bye.